The book I'm going to talk to you about today completely changed my life. But what's absolutely crazy is that I've never met anybody who's even heard of it. But that's why I'm doing this video today. Because if I was to do a video about Atomic Habits or The Da Vinci Code, no one would care. Not because they're bad books. Quite the opposite, actually. They're amazing. But everybody's heard of them and everybody's read them, so nobody needs to watch that video. But whenever somebody else introduces me to something that they say has changed their life for the better, I'm always intrigued. So I hope you find this video useful. The book in question is called Peak, Secrets from the New Science of Expertise. It was written by two chaps called Anders Ericsson and Robert Poole and published in 2016. So what, eight years ago? And what this book essentially does is completely deconstruct the idea, the phenomenon that natural ability is a thing. And this was so powerful for me because growing up, I always held on to this belief that I was destined to be average because I never had the natural ability of an athlete, the charisma of an actor, or the intelligence of a business leader. And that belief, that limiting belief, I should say, became a part of my identity, an identity that for the longest time held me back. But this book proves over and over again that natural ability is complete now, don't get me wrong, some people do have natural advantages. NBA players, for example, need to be taught. But that doesn't mean that being six foot ten automatically qualifies you to become an elite athlete who earns millions of dollars a year. In fact, if you think about it, the whole notion that natural ability is a thing, it's not just a limiting belief, it's actually an insult to the men and women who work so hard to get to the top of their field. Because Anders Ericsson, the main author of this book, has made a career out of studying these people. Whether it's chess champions, star athletes, violinists, the list goes on. And his main finding is that innate, God-given, natural ability and talent is far less important than most people think. And like I said, that was so powerful for me to hear. I had given myself the excuse that because I didn't have natural talent in basically anything, I'd grown up a very average kid who was average at pretty much everything I put my hand to, that I was going to be average for the rest of my life. But Ericsson argues that with time and something that he calls deliberate practice, literally anybody can get better at almost anything. And probably even more crucially, he found that there is no ceiling to what individuals or us as a society can achieve. And what's so cool and so compelling about this book is that it's not just based on scientific theory. The authors have meticulously studied the careers of Serena Williams, Michael Jordan, Mozart, and even a chess grandmaster called Gary Kasparov. And the common theme amongst all of them had nothing to do with natural ability. It was hard work. It was deliberate practice. Even Mozart, who in my opinion is actually the most compelling example in the book, he was widely considered this savant, this blessing from the heavens, because he was on tour at the age of six. Can you actually imagine that, by the way, selling out stadiums like Taylor Swift at the age of six? But his father started teaching him piano daily, aged three. He practiced for hours every single day, 1,000 days in a row. And Tiger Woods is another great example of this. He was hitting golf balls from the day that he could walk. So what exactly is this deliberate practice that the author talks about? How can you and I use it in our day-to-day -day lives? Or rather than rewriting it, I'm going to read you exactly what the author says about it himself. Deliberate practice is a structured, intentional approach to skill development that goes far beyond regular practice or mindless repetition. Unlike simply putting in hours, deliberate practice involves having clear goals for each session and focusing on areas where you're weakest. It's about pushing your limits by targeting specific skills and refining them over time. Every session requires intense concentration and a commitment to stay engaged, avoiding distractions, and practicing with a clear purpose in mind. The process doesn't stop there though. Feedback is a critical part of deliberate practice, whether it's from a coach, a mentor, or your own observations, allowing you to adjust, refine, and improve. This feedback loop helps you to identify mistakes and make corrections in real time, ensuring you're always progressing rather than getting stuck at your current level. The key is to focus on small, achievable tasks that are slightly beyond your current abilities, creating the perfect balance of challenge and success that leads to consistent growth. Deliberate practice is not a quick fix. It requires years of sustained effort and a mindset focused on continuous improvement. But it's the very thing that separates amateurs from any top performers in any field, whether it's sports, music, or business. Quite literally, 
it is one thing. People are always looking for the hack or the shortcut, but this is not it. By engaging in deliberate practice, you transform your weaknesses into strengths and achieve levels of success that you never thought were possible. But as he said, it's not about practicing harder, it's about practicing smarter. Practicing with intention, with feedback, and with a relentless drive to improve every single day. So many people give up so soon and it breaks my heart because they just cast it off that they're not meant to be good at it. But take a more logical approach. When you first start anything, would it be rational and you'd be good at it? No, you're going to suck and you're probably going to suck for longer than you think. When I first started this YouTube channel, I sucked, but I posted every single day for 125 days in a row. And now I've done 203 videos in 275 days. I have deliberately practiced all because of the lessons, the new belief system that I took from this book. And here's a true story for you. It took me 87 days to get my first 100 subscribers. But here's what's crazy. Within 90 days after that, I hit a thousand subscribers. My channel grew 10X in the same time that it took me to go from zero to 100. But then it went even crazier because I went from 1,000 subs to 3,000 subs in just 36 days. And here's the thing, I still have the mindset that I suck, that I'm just getting started. Remember what the author said, a mindset focused on continuous improvement. And listen, if I hadn't have read this book, I would have given up way sooner, not just because it helped me to grow a YouTube channel, but because it changed the way that I do everything. And that's one of the biggest lessons that I teach my clients now. The first steps that you take are the biggest, the scariest, and the hardest. And what makes it worse, what makes it harder, is that you'll get almost nothing back in return and reward for taking them. But the more steps that you take, not only do they get smaller and easier, but the returns, the rewards, get greater and greater. And it's important to remember that our brains cannot comprehend this because they've been programmed to believe that effort in equals reward out. But progress and life in general almost never works on a linear scale. You have to suck at something for longer than you want to, longer than you think you'll have to, longer than you can even imagine. But if you can just hang in there and keep going, you will, no if, buts, or maybes, get exactly what you want. Even though I've summarized the lessons that I've learned from this book in this video, I would still strongly recommend that you go and check it out for yourself. The authors go into such great detail on each of the examples that they give, and they provide so much compelling evidence that as you go through the book, you will feel your mindset shifting and changing for the better. It's on Amazon for like 10 bucks, and it's probably even cheaper on Kindle. This book changed my life, and I hope it changes yours too. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.